In this video, I'm going to show you how to make coconut milk SCD yogurt, a uh, specific carbohydrate yogurt. So I'll just start with what you need. Um, you need four cans of coconut milk, and I use this one. It's the unsweetened organic coconut milk, Simple, by Native Forest. And you want to get one that doesn't have any guar gum or any kind of gums or um, additive stuff like that. This one's just uh, coconut and filtered water. So that's a good one. So four cans of that, and you need honey. You wanna get one that's not raw honey, because uh, I read an article that said that if it's raw, there's enzymes in it that can ferment in the yogurt and stuff, and then it, whatever. So get the pasteurized stuff, and uh, at Target they have one. It's actually organic and pasteurized, which is kinda of hard to find, so it's pretty cool that it's at Target. And then, you need some gelatin. This is to thicken it, kind of like Jello. Um, and preferably, you should get pasture raised and grass fed. And uh, yeah. Then you need a temperature thingy that I got off Amazon. That you know, you stick the uh, temperature in the milk or whatever. And then a whisk and a one tablespoon and one eighth tablespoon spoons and uh, a pot and this stuff uh, which is a starter it doesn't have to be this exact brand this is the best brand it's dairy free so it's probably what you want to use if you're gonna make coconut milk yogurt because you know you're probably making that because you're dairy free or you want to reduce dairy uh, this one is dairy-free um, starter, which is like a probiotic that you use to ferment in your yogurt. And then it ha this one has Streptococcus thermophilus, Lactobacillus vulgaricus, and Lactobacillus casei. Um, so that's like SCD approved. And then I also add this one, and this is from the company GI Pro Health. Um, yeah, it's called GI Pro Start. You can get it on Amazon. And then the, from the same company, I also get one called SC Dophilus. Uh, this is this one here is the SC Dophilus Three Plus, but I also have one that's the SC Dophilus Ten Plus that I actually use. I just grabbed the wrong one. Uh, so. I would use this one probably, the Acidophilus 10 Plus. This is just Acidophilus, Lactobacillus Acidophilus, that I put in there as well as this starter. And um, if you don't, you know, if this stuff's kind of pricey. Um, I would say definitely get this one if you can afford it. But I think there's also cheaper ones that are from the brand uh, Yo Gourmet. That's a starter that um, is like technically STD approved. It's it's dairy derived, but it's probably fine. Like it's it's just one that people a lot of people use, and it's totally fine for most people. All right, and I know it seems like a lot of stuff, but it's really not. You probably have most of this stuff at home, you know, like coconut milk, uh, and then honey and gelatin. I got that on Amazon. Um, and that's so that's like basically for the ingredients, and then the the only thing you probably really have to buy on Amazon is the starter. Um, and then a whisk, and yeah, I'm just repeating myself. All right, so what you do is, I'm just gonna try to do this all in one take because I don't feel like editing it because I have so much to do. But I wanted to, I, when I first like was looking how to make a CD yogurt, oh, sorry, and you also need um, some kind of fermenting thing. I have this one from a brand called Lavelle. And a lot of people, they, this is an actual like yogurt maker, especially designed just to like ferment yogurt. And uh, it's a really good brand. It's like the Apple computers of uh, SCD yogurt making. So I would get this one if you can. Uh, if you can. Um, they also, there's also other ones. You can use um, one from Yo Gourmet, the same brand that has that starter. And they have one that a lot of people use. And also um, you can use an instant pot. So, um, one of those three will work. You just want to have something that'll have a timer that can go, that can stay at like 100 degrees or so. Um, and you know what? I'm just to make things easier and not to like try to make money off you guys or whatever, you know, but just to make it easier. I'm, 
I was originally not going to put like the links in the description for all the products and stuff, but I, you know, just for the sake of having it easier just to click and like there's the product or whatever. I'm just going to link all the products that I buy, like the starters that you can get and the um, fermenters and the gelatin and uh, the, the honey you can get on at Target. Okay. Um, I guess I'll link this too, but it's pretty obvious what it is. It's a temperature thing. Okay, and I'm just gonna try to do this all in one take because I'm a perfectionist and I've tried to attempt this video of making this video on how to make this like a hundred times in the past and I'm always like, oh, it has to be perfect, the lighting and the editing, so I'm just gonna do it because when I first started my SCD journey, oh, I hate that saying, but um, I don't know why, uh, I couldn't find how to make coconut milk yogurt. Um, and I mean, there's a, there's a few people who had instructions that were written out, but it was just it's just easier to see it. So I'm gonna do that. Okay. Uh, so you open the coconut milk. Well, you turn on the oven thing. I usually do it at like a little bit less than medium, and then you pour in the coconut milk. And I probably should have shaken it because usually it like clumps or whatever. So shake and then open. Yeah, that's the frame. When I was in high school, a friend told me, he had a Pepsi or something, and he got up out of his chair and grabbed a paper towel and water and wiped down the Pepsi. And then when I asked why he did it, he said that it's common to have rat pee on the uh, soda cans when they sit in the warehouse. And people die because they drink the the rat pee on the soda. And ever since then, I've always checked my cans uh, a little bit. Okay, so that's four cans of coconut milk. And obviously, you know, you, you can like have this recipe, H A L F, H A L V E. You can ha make half the recipe or double or whatever. But this one is this one. So this is four cans of coconut milk. Um, this one, this. Little belly train holds like four cans of coconut milk. Okay, and then what you want is the honey. And so I use one, uh, two tablespoons of honey. I got this recipe basically from someone in an SCD group on Facebook. And I added a little bit more honey than she recommended. Um, and a little bit more probiotics. Um, but whatever, it's not like an exact science, it's, you know, it's not like it's going to be totally wrong if, it, if you don't do the exact amount. I just do two tablespoons of honey. You want, you want to have at least a tablespoon, but two, because the honey, because uh, coconut milk doesn't have uh, lactose in it, like regular milk does, um, there's no so there's no sugar in it, there's nothing for the probiotics to eat so they can like grow. And stuff and so that's what the honey is it's it's sugar uh, so that the probiotics have something to eat so they actually ferment okay and then uh, that's two tablespoons of honey it's so weird like doing this on camera because I feel like I have to be quicker and usually I'm so careful at everything but I feel like I'm just like throwing it together like a normal person probably does because I'm a little bit obsessive about everything okay uh, and then, oh, the gelatin. Oh, shoot. Usually I usually add the gelatin first. See, this is why. Usually I usually add the gelatin first because there's now there's honey on here and the gelatin's going to stick. So I'm just going to eyeball it <laughs> this time. Uh, but you want two tablespoons. And see, if, if I wasn't making this video, I would have, like, remembered. Actually... Here's a half tablespoon, so I'm just going to put four of these in. 
So you, I usually do two tablespoons. Um, sometimes two tablespoons can actually be too much though. So, so, you know, I think I'm actually gonna try a tablespoon and a half this time. Because the last two times it's been very thick and not like creamy, really. I mean, it's never really super creamy, but uh, I just, I think it's because I add too much gelatin. So I'm gonna do like one, one tablespoon and then actually probably a quarter. And then, uh, this is what it looks like. And you'll notice, um, oh, you can't zoom in, <laughs> that the honey is like on top there, or the, the gelatin is like on top. And it's gonna be a total, it's gonna look like a total mess until the very end, like this whole project that we're doing. Um, so then you stir it like this, and there will be clumps of, gel of uh, gelatin, and it's, like, can you see the clumps? Let me get this like tripod closer. Yeah. Um, see that? Like, see this? See all this? See that? Uh, that's totally normal. And even up until the point of basically putting in here, it's still gonna have these clumps. And even when you put it in there, probably. Now you wanna try to get them out as much as possible. You know, you want to stir it pretty well, like this. And the goal here is to just try to get it the least amount of clumps as possible, but don't obsess over it. They're gonna, cause it's, we're gonna heat this up to 180 degrees because um, e <laughs> well, because uh, the reason that we're heating this up to 180 degrees is because it kills bacteria that might be in the milk already that like will get fermented if you don't heat it up. Some people don't heat it up, uh, but it's usually recommended to do it. Yeah, I mean, it would be really hard to get these gelatin clumps out anyways if you didn't heat it up like this. So you, I usually heat it to about 180, that's like the recommended temperature. And the heating of it helps the gelatin clumps like dissolve into the milk. So it makes it less clumpy. And then um, it'll probably, you know, if you're on medium heat, it might take like five or 10 minutes probably ish to get to 180, maybe 15, I don't know. All right, so I'll just let, I'm gonna turn this off now and then uh, come back. Actually, I meant to explain because, oh my gosh, this video is a dumpster fire. Okay, um, so what I'm gonna do is heat this up to 180 degrees and I'm going to check that temperature with my temperature thingy and I'll probably do it later on camera. And uh, I'm gonna make sure it's at 180. And I'm basically just gonna keep stirring. now. About at this point, you know, the clumps are kind of small and stuff, um, so I don't have to keep stirring. I'm just kind of being ex excessive because of the video. Um, so I think I'm gonna stop there, and now I'm just gonna wait, like, I don't know, however long it takes to get 180. Uh, and I'll come back. All right, it has hit 180. As you can see. And then at this point, I'll usually just give it one more stir. And then you want to let it cool down to about 100 degrees at the most. Somewhere between 90 and 100. Because if you put it in, if you put the probiotics, because the next step is to put the probiotics in. And if you put the probiotics in when it's over 100 degrees, um, like if it was like 120 or something, they would die because it's too hot. Uh, so you wanna do it when it's like 90 to 100 degrees. And I'm lazy, so I usually try to start the yogurt like early in the day kind of thing, and then just let it air cool off like back here. And that usually takes like four hours and then I come back to it. Uh, or you can also fill up your sink with like an ice and ice water and put you know put this in there and let it cool down and then like and the ice melts you do it again and stuff and it'll cool down probably way faster 
But at this point, I just let it cool down until it's like 90 degrees. And then come back to it. So that's where we're gonna leave off. Hi. Um, I just wanted to mention that sometimes while it's like cooling down, if you're one of the people that leaves it out like this, I'll just like stir it every, I don't know, hour or so. Just to try to break up the clumps. I don't really even see any more clumps or whatever, but yeah. And another thing I want to mention is you want to keep all your stuff as clean as possible. Like your pots and your whisk and your measuring spoons and stuff. And this, uh, the, this thing, the glass in there that holds the stuff. Because it's fermenting over 24 hours or uh, like 12 to 18 hours probably actually. Um, I'll get to that later. But uh, and since it's fermenting, you don't want to you don't want to have like that many other kind of stuff other than the milk and the probiotics. You know, uh, you don't want to have whatever germs are in here. If it's been sitting in the cabinet for two years and there's like dust bunnies in it. You probably don't want to use that one. So um, try to try to keep your stuff clean. I usually like wash it and then like take it out of the dishwasher and use it. Um, that might be a little obsessive, but it's what I do. So just a tip. All right, cool. All right, it's been about four hours and it's cooled to about 90 degrees. Um, so what I like to do is just stir it once more because there's less, like a little layer of stuff usually that forms. I don't know what it is, but it's just a little layer on top. So when you stir it, it kind of mixes it together with the milk. And now since it's uh, 90 degrees, we can put the probiotics in without them dying. Um, now if you have this probiotic and four cups of coconut milk like I do, the serving size I think is around 1 16th of a teaspoon. But I like to just put more in. I usually put like at least an eighth in, so double, sometimes like a heaping eighth like that because I live on the edge let's put a little more in all right cool and then oh yeah and you also make sure when you get these that you refrigerate keep, keep them refrigerated they come like frozen with the ice pack, and then you wanna keep, put them in the fridge when you get them. Um, and then, okay, so one of these, this is not like an official, like, you could just do it with this, with just the GI Pro Start regular starter, um, or Yo Gourmet, or whatever you're using. Um, but I am also going to put in this SC Dophilus 10 Plus. Uh, they also have a three plus if you don't want to go the whole 10 because I'm like a hard ass and I can do all the 10 billion, I guess. Um, so I just put one of these in. They're like capsules. So um, I just take capsule and because I like I like a acidophilus. It's a very friendly bacteria. And then I open the capsule up like this. Just take the top off. And then put it in. Yay. Okay. And then we put these guys back in the fridge. And then we gently stir in the probiotics because they're kind of like floating as a powder on top of the milk. So I just stir it in. These are gentle creatures, so you want to be, you know, you don't want to stir too hard. I actually saw a recipe for this that said stir vigorous, vigorously. I don't know, it just doesn't feel right. It feels right to stir them gently, because, I don't know. <laughs> it just feels right, all right? I don't need a scientific reason for everything. So stir it in, cool, all right. And now, what you do, because the pro now the probiotics are in there, you pour it in the thing. The, is this recording? Okay. You put it in this glass container. 
like that, if you have a little bell, or you'd put it in the Instant Pot or the Yo Gourmet thing. And then you put the lid on. And then you push this little thing down because that vacuum seals it. And then, uh, this is specifically for the Lavelle thing. Um, you put this in here, like this. And then you fill this with water. So I'm gonna do that now. And one more. There's like two lines back on in the back of it that you can like check the water line. You want to make sure it's in the middle of those two. And then you plug it in. Oh man, I can't plug it in. What is going on? Okay. I think that's good. Now, put it back here. And let me take this off now. We bring it uh, over here. I'm, I'm using the front facing camera, so I'm like looking at it from behind or whatever. Words. Okay, it's late at night now because. It's four hours later, so that's why my mind is moving slower. All right, so uh, we click the button that says temp, and we want, I like to use 100 because it's in the middle. There's like 97, 100, 104. This thing is set, you know, specifically for yogurt temperatures. I use the one that's in the middle just because, I don't know, I feel like it's the best because it's in the middle. <laughs> and now for the time, the amount of time I find that between 12 and 20 hours is good for the yogurt. Some people say like 12 hours, some people say it has to be 24, I don't know. It's just, I find somewhere between 12 and 20 is good. Uh, so what I like to do, because sometimes I don't know exactly when I'll be ready to, like I might be out at the grocery store when it goes off or whatever, if it was exactly 12 hours, you know? Um, so what I like to do is set it to 20. So I'm gonna do that now. And then, um, put, oh yeah, and you have to put this uh, thing on. You have to put this uh, plastic lid on, because that's what like helps the incubation. Just gonna make sure that's centered. And then to put this plastic lid on, actually there's like a, yeah, that's fine. Whatever. There was a there's a piece of dirt in there or something, but it's not gonna go through the glass, so. Okay. Now we have the lid on. I'm sorry if this camera work is bad. I'm using the front facing camera because I just took it off the stand. Alright, so um this lid is on. I have it set for 20 hours because I can have it like anytime after it's been there for 12 hours, I can take it off. So if it's set for 20, like when this thing is done, it goes off and it doesn't like keep going. It just turns off and you don't want to leave it off just sitting out here because it'll get too cold. Um, you know, what? after like an hour or so. So what I like to do is set it for the max time and then, you know, it's 1120 now. So then if I wake up or get off work or whatever, and it's like three, you know, and I, and I said if for 12 hours, then it would be 11, 20, it would, it would have gone off at 11. So if I set it for 20 hours, oops, what did I click? I hit go. Okay. <laughs> oh man, this video. Okay. You understand, right folks? Do I, do I explain this clearly? Um, if it's set for 20 hours, then I can just take it off 
any time between 12 and 20 hours and it's still going. So I can just click cancel and then it'll like turn off between then. Okay, so I think I hit, I think I hit confirm. So 20 hours at 100 degrees. And then I'll usually write down like, oh, it can be taken out anytime after 11.30 tomorrow. All right, so that's why I'm gonna leave you guys off at this yogurt maker uh, here. And um, you'll see that it starts like con con forming condensation because it heats the water up. And uh, there's like bubbles like on a soda can and stuff on the outside of it, but on the inside here. And uh, so yeah, um, I'll see you fam later. And uh, good night. All right, it's tomorrow. So this has been here about 18 hours. So I'm gonna unplug it. And you can see the condensation. I probably should have hit cancel. I just unplugged it. Uh, you can see the condensation. Um, so I'm just gonna like, take it off the lid and then take it out of the thing. And you'll see that yellow at the bottom there? That's perfectly normal. You might look at it and be like, oh, that's disgusting. And it kind of does look like that, but that's how it's supposed to look. It separates like that. And I like to keep it on, I like to put it on a paper towel like this so I can dry it off because it's gonna go in the fridge. And we don't want it, well, I don't know, dripping in the fridge. I just want it to be clean. So I just like, dry off all the water and then put it in the fridge and you don't want to like disturb it you just kind of keep it like this for now in the fridge and then basically um, I'm not gonna film the rest but in one hour you basically just stir it a little like gently so you take it out of the fridge in an hour and then you stir it gently um and then you put it back in the fridge and that's it so I don't know maybe I'll film it uh and then it's done so then and then oh and then you let it so after you stir it then you let it sit for like six to eight hours in the fridge and it'll be done so all right bye all right I'm going the whole nine yards with this video so uh, I'm going to take it out of the fridge. It's been in there for one hour and you'll notice that it still has that layer of stuff. It's totally cool, man. So then you just take the lid off. And gently stir like this until it's like done, man. Until it's all one color. All right, there we go. And you put the lid on. Yay, I know, that was so complex. That definitely needs to be on video. Because that's probably the hardest part of this whole process. And so, then, so after this, then you wait like eight hours or so until it's done. Um, and then it'll be done forever. And I might try to like film that too. Really go the whole nine yards and get the end result for you guys. Since we've, we've been on this journey um, so far, okay. All right, so it's now the next day. I just left it in the fridge overnight. I know it's not fall off the spoon creamy, but it still has the probiotics in it, so it gets the job done, and it tastes really good, in my opinion. You can add like honey or berries to it, um, and it's pretty good that way, uh, or bananas or something, or put it on liberated specialty foods waffles, which I've done, definitely. Uh, and it has gelatin in it, and gelatin's actually like good for your digestive tract, so that's totally cool. And if you add too much gelatin and it's not like fall off the spoon creamy like that, then uh, you have more gelatin, so that's good. So it's like a win-win.
Out of the way. Yo, yo. Um, I just want to end this video off with some thoughts and tips about the yogurt. The first one is that um, it's this yogurt is not as, as much as I hate the word creamy, um, I have to use it. So it's not as creamy as like regular yogurt is because it's coconut milk yogurt. And so, um, but this yogurt batch is actually creamier than the last few that I've made because I had been using two tablespoons of gelatin powder. In this one I used one and a quarter, as you saw. And um, so, you, you know, you might even, ex so and it's actually more creamy. So you might experiment with like a qu uh, three quarters of a tablespoon to see what's up with that, how that goes. Um, the second thing is that this lasts a week in the fridge approximately. Um, uh, I mean, I've, I've actually gone over a week. I've probably gone like almost two weeks with it in the fridge and it's been fine, but I don't know. I read somewhere it's good for a week, but it's probably good for longer. Um, but usually it, it lasts like a week for me. And then uh, the third thing is that the, uh, the, the Elaine, whatever, the, the Elaine Gottschall, I shouldn't say whatever, she's a great person, um, really is, honestly. Um, so she's important, I shouldn't say whatever. Uh, she says that we, or that he, humans, we, sh uh, people who are on the CD, shouldn't be like eating more than three cups of the yogurt a day, which is a lot, so you probably won't have that problem at all. And then the last uh, thing is that I just wanted to say thank you for watching my very high production quality video here um, with my $20,000 camera, obviously, and stuff. And um, I hope it was helpful to you guys, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.